some of you um, kind of follow Augustine in the belief that uh, evil is non-being or it's non it's not real it's, uh, it has no substance of itself that in fact evil is merely a distortion or um, parasitic upon the good this is um, a doctrine that Augustine developed really in response to Manichaeanism and if I remember correctly in the confessions he actually um, is Manichaean for a while uh, Manichaeanism um, is the belief that there are two well it's a cluster of beliefs but the the short version or the the you know the hyperbolic version is 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 that there's these two forces in the universe they're equally powerful one is good one is evil and they're locked in combat augustine looked at that and said no um and it, you know after his conversion after his uh, exposure to christianity and and teaching uh from origin and others he recognized that um evil is not that evil does not have power over the good evil doesn't win battles or at least it's not going to win the war uh, and he went even farther he said evil ultimately doesn't have substance the way good does evil is a distortion or a corruption of the good uh, it's parasitic on the good all you know god is all in all Evil is this kind of small little thing that's uh, that, that's twisting or corrupting what what God is and what God has done, and Augustine, you know, holds this position for a number of reasons, not the least of which is that he doesn't want to um, he doesn't want to say that God created evil because if God's all good, how could something evil come from God? And that's a problem. However, the solution also has a problem, and that is that uh, it seems that there are goods in this world that. Um, require some kind of evil. Um, a great example is something like uh, building a city. Building a city is really, really good uh, when you, you know, creating uh, or creating a piece of art, or you know, you put the two together. An architect thinks that what they're doing is art, and they're also building buildings for people. It's great to build buildings for people, especially if they're beautiful, especially if they're functional. And yet, in order for an architect to get from the plans to the building, a whole lot of pain and suffering goes into the process. Uh, we tend to we tend to gloss over this and we just call it hard work, but all hard work really is is it's pain and suffering. It's maybe not the extraordinary kind of pain and suffering that you get in, for example, you know, a war zone, but it is pain and suffering. Anybody who any one of you who's done um, who's embarked on a great project, you know that there are setbacks. There's resistance. There's there's pain. There's moments of self-doubt and confusion. There's, there's, uh, you lose your sense of the vision of the future. That is all pain. It is all classically what we think of as evil. And yet, without those things, the finished project, the, the, the completed building, the completed city, the completed work of art wouldn't be what it is. It wouldn't be as satisfying. It wouldn't be as joy-bringing. It wouldn't, it wouldn't be um, as, as good. The goodness of the completed thing is itself, it seems, parasitic on some kind of evil, some kind of pain. There is a necessity for those things. And you really, I mean, this comes out in Scripture, in Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes is chock full of this. Uh, you get the sense of a, of, of a, of a person who, who embarks on great projects because of the, of the challenge and, and the difficulty, and then looks and, it, and for a time is just overwhelmed joy and then loss and despair as those things lose their meaning and, and you just move on to the next project but I, I think it, it shows it shows that there is some element of truth to this and I'm not sure what Augustine would say about that um, and for those of you who believe that that evil or suffering or pain is non-being you have to deal with that one way you can do it is you can say well the suffering and the pain that goes into a great project is not evil Pain is not evil, inherently. Uh, to which I'd say probably you're right. Um, in my lectures last week, I talked about pain being a part of uh, the created order. Uh, but there's a problem, because then you have to be able to learn how to distinguish between, or create criteria for distinguishing between pain and suffering that's evil, and pain and suffering that's not. And that is a really challenging thing to do. Um, you might want to check out, I think uh, Hans Borsma, uh, in his book on hospitality and the cross, uh, deals with this and tries to make sense or tries to come up with criteria for um, distinguishing between uh, pain and suffering that's evil and pain and suffering that's not. One thing we can say, we can say uh, for sure, 
is that if we're going to say that evil is non-being, we're going to stand in the Augustinian tradition, and we're going to say that evil has no substance of its own, we are going to have to come up with an account of, of how it is that good things, that, that evil, or that pain and suffering are incorporated into great goods. Um, and we're going to have to uh, affirm, we're going to have to unqualifiedly affirm the fact that not all pain and suffering is evil. And that actually goes against the grain, um, especially in uh, Western culture, uh, contemporary Western culture, where um, we're a pain of our society. And so we, we, we associate pain and suffering with evil in a way that probably they didn't used to do um, in pre-modern uh, times. And I think there's a, there's a converse to that question. So if you want to say that um, evil is somehow parasitic on the good and that you know, there's a problem of non-being with evil and evil's not real, it has no substance in the way that good does, whatever, you also want to ask the flip side of that question. One of the things that we associate uh, as a good, we, we think of as a good, is something like compassion, empathy. Well, a, a, compassion and empathy, I mean, aren't those kind of parasitic on bad things? Is it really possible to have compassion or empathy if there is no uh, pain or suffering that is evil? And so again, you, you, it's very, very critical that we think carefully about how we're going to incorporate pain and suffering into our, um, into our understanding of creation and providence. Uh, because it seems like, it really seems like some pain and some suffering is necessary for some great goods. And compassion is honestly one of them. Uh, I, 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 I mean, I'm, I'm not ready to say that, um, you know, catastrophic injury is, um, is, a, is, a, is a good thing. But I do want to suggest that maybe, maybe, Maybe it's the case that um, something is neither, uh, an instance of pain or suffering is neither good nor evil until after we see how it's received by the injured one. Um, that is, there, there's no hard and fast, right or wrong, okay, having a person's arm cut off, that's not evil and it's not good. It's definitely pain and suffering. But we're not going to qualify it, we're not going to label it, categorize it as evil or good until we see what comes of it. Um, another way to put that would be to say that uh, pain and suffering has the possibility of being um, catastrophic and purely damaging, or it could also be something that leads to great instances of grace, healing, um, compassion, and joy. But we don't know in the moment. And so maybe it's the case that um, pain and suffering are neither evil nor good until after.